prepare yourself film fanatics this is Chris with talking through the medias and this is we got your mail right off the bat this is the best episode I've ever done probably ever will do I'm just gonna get that out the way right now I'm uh, kinda geeking out because uh, if you know me if you're one of my closest friends you already know that there's only a few things in this world that just this makes me go crazy that makes me geek out and just, just shuts me down every time that is bone thugs and harmony ducktales watching hit or miss movies on youtube doing this and just recently watching my favorite segment on collider on youtube collider tv talk more importantly Miss Sasha Pearl Raver and um, I, every time the show comes on I can't stop shutting up about you know that one particular individual I don't know why I turn into a geek again I'm that guy in high school that, that you know he's probably the nicest person in the world she'll always say hi she's always polite but yet for some reason I just I'm, I, 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 she doesn't like me. I just no. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna shut down. I don't know what it is. I do not know what it is. This person. I just. That's it. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, guys. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I mean, I already know the universe. This is the universe. The way things fo- unfolded was the way it was meant to be. But I'm telling you right now, if things were different, if you know, she's happily married, you know, and I respect that. You know, I respect that. But if she wasn't. I'm telling you right now, I would be getting turned down by her this very moment. But, you know, I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know if I would have been like, hey, would you like to go out? Like, no. no. You know what? You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she's the kind of, I feel, you know, what? I feel like she would be one of those uh, persons that would give me, with my punchable face, one of those yes, no answers. Like, you're like, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Sasha, uh, would, would you like to maybe hang out for one second. She went, yeah, no. I think that's probably you know that's just what I think. But you know what, man, you know, you never know. But the reason why I bring that up is because I have only two questions, and they come from two very, very awesome individuals who I have all the respect for on YouTube. Uh, they're very entertaining. I am a, a subscriber. I am a follower. I am a I, I'm telling you guys right now, when it comes to these two, I got their back like big crayons and big coloring books. You say something bad about any one of these people, it's going to be me, you, and the paramedics, man. I'm not saying I'm going to win. I probably won't. Scratch. So I'm just going to let you know, man. I, I, I ain't going to have it. Just don't do it. Respect. So let's get to the questions. Because I scared myself right there. So the first question comes from, you probably already guessed it, Miss Movies. If you're not a subscriber to her channel, go right now. You can, you can after this, you can go over, go to Hit or Miss Movies. It took me about three days to get that pun, that play with words. Hit or Miss Movies. She calls herself Miss Movies. I was like, I just got that. So she sends a question in, and her question is a good one. It is, not including Star Wars or Back to the Future, what's your favorite fictional invention in a film? Well, <clears throat> this was one of the hardest questions in the world, because even though she set the rules and said, not including Back to the Future, not including Star Wars. What did my brain do? I immediately went to a damn lightsaber. Ah. So, I think, because I feel like we need to poo. Think, think, think. Well, well, Piglet, maybe if the who's it's was with the thigmabob, that would be a great invention for your movie. <laughs> Bless the honey. But, you know, I'm not as smart as Pooh. I know a lot about a little and a little about a lot of things. But what I knew is this. And when it hit me, it hit me hard. And that's what she said. 
this is my favorite invention of all time in a film. Now, this includes Star Wars and, and Back to the Future, the Flux. I love the Flux capacitor, but screw that compared to this bad boy. If you've never seen the movie, The Explorers, what the hell is wrong with you? The Thunder Road, baby. That is my all time favorite invention in a film. The Thunder Road. Now, the Thunder Road was a spaceship that was uh, made by, you know, Ethan Hawke and his friends uh, when they were, you know, they were young, young, a young Ethan Hawke. Go check it out if you haven't checked it out. You know, these kids get the, it's this technology that was uh, bestowed to them and they, they learned how to make a floating sphere that they could make giant and they could get inside of this digital sphere, this force field and fly off in outer space. Now, the, the force field wasn't their invention. I, that was given to them by the aliens that put it in their brains and on a for some reason, they were able to make that happen on a damn Macintosh on floppy disk. It's a movie, guys. Relax. But that wasn't the invention. The Thunder Road, the ship that they built by their hands, by the grit, the gusto, and everything that a kid can imagine. You put some, you make a fort. You're a, you're a little boy. You're you're my age. I'm I'm 36 years old right now, and you're you're in the uh you're in your fort. I mean, it's the ultimate fort. The damn thing could fly. They got a carnival ride. They hollowed it out. They got a trash can in front. They got the lights. They got the windshield. They got the three windows. They got the oxygen mask. They got the popcorn. Thing had snacks. I mean, the thing flew. Front row seats. At a drive through movie. This is flying right up to the screen. The ultimate big screen. They don't get no better than that. Ain't nothing better than that. They are flying around. Then the damn thing went out of space. This was before the damn thing went into space. Light speed. No inertia. You ready to go night night? Watch the Explorers. The greatest invention of all time in a film. Hands down. You got a better one? Challenge me. Let me know. Holla at your boy. Now, moving on. The next question comes from a, let's see if we can, who is this lovely young lady? This is um, Sasha, <clears throat> uh, Sasha Pearl uh, Raver and um, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Pearl Raver. Respect. Since this summer is all about sequels, what film of the summer would you like to see another installment of? What's the new plot? This is the greatest question of all time. I love this question. I don't know why. Just, it's awesome. Now, I didn't really like this uh, this movie all this much. If you saw my review of the Ghostbusters movie, you know, I probably will get a... I think it. they might... Sony might be pushing for a sequel. I heard. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think the... The <laughs> budget versus uh, box office uh, wasn't... Wasn't good. It was, it was looking a little bleak. I'm sorry. I'm thinking somebody better go back to the drawing board. <laughs> but uh, if I was the head of Sony before I you know, took that company even further into the abyss that it's already, you know, been heading to, uh, before these desperate Hail Marys, uh, that they're doing. Come on, Men in Black and 21 Jump Street. Come on, man. Uh, what are you doing? Come on. Look at yourself, Sony. Come on. Get it together, baby. What I would do is I would now see the reason why I enjoyed uh, Ghostbusters was uh, I didn't go in there with high expectations I wasn't going to compare it to the original I knew no matter what it wasn't going to compare uh, to the uh, the nostalgia of what the first one did it just it, it's a it's a nice little tucked away space in my heart and it always will have that that space reserved for the original uh, film it doesn't mean that I couldn't enjoy the uh, reboot, the 2016 version, on a different level, and I did. I enjoyed it on a different level. I even liked the way the ghosts look. I thought I was going to hate it based on what they what they what they looked like on the trailer. I thought it was going to be too cartoony. The first three acts I really enjoyed. The third act it just got 
it just went way over the top. It just got it's just too much. Um, the things I liked about it turned out to be the things I thought I wasn't going to like about it. And the things that I didn't like about it, I, I went in thinking that was going to be the stuff I loved. So it was, it was like throw mama from the train. It crisscrossed. Um, what would I do? So if you've seen my review of the Ghostbusters movie and only like f what, six of you did, you already know that I went into this movie thinking that I just totally ignored Sony when they said this is a reboot of the original. They shouldn't have done that. They they marketed heavily and, and just put this sh this movie on the shoulders of the original movie and it was destined for failure it's ever since. You used the original music too much and then you remixed it right back to back to, I mean, what the hell was that? And you, you had these cameos that were great and you know, some were not as good as the other. And then you, you said, but it's supposed to be its own little universe. And it's, but you, it was like a desperate thing. I don't know what was going on. Come on, baby, get it together. So what I did was I said, you know what? This to me would have been better served if Sony would have said, "Hey, this isn't a reboot of that original Ghostbusters movie that we all love and are going crazy over right now that we're, you know, changing. This is a film adaptation of the cartoon, the real Ghostbusters." Now, the Egon character of the the, the movie, she I feel like her uh like is it Mc, Mc, McKinnon I feel like she was made up to look like the Egon from the cartoon, blonde, the poofed up hair, the circle specs. I mean, the character, the way they acted was totally different, but still, I felt like when I saw that, then my brain just locked onto the real Ghostbusters. I felt like if Sony would have said, this is a film adaptation of the real Ghostbusters cartoon, I think that half of those people that just trolled and hated for no reason and wouldn't give this a chance, probably would have forgiven it. Hey, you know what? I probably don't like the movie all that much, but at least it doesn't, it's not being tied to the one that I do like. It's only being tied to that cartoon. Now, here's what the new plot would be. Going to the cartoon, I would use the Boogeyman. That is the character that I would use for the sequel for Ghostbusters. The Boogeyman. If you like that cartoon, that was the scariest thing on Saturday morning TV. I don't know what they were thinking, putting that guy in front of, I, I freak. I was Saturday morning, sunshine and birds chirping. I was pissing my pants. That's how scary that dude was. Man, I couldn't go to sleep. He had that big old freaky face with the pointy ears and he had the hooves and he, and he talked like he was about to come get you. He felt like an, a character from, uh, from Family Guy, if you follow me. It was just weird. I have something in my pocket. It was bad. So that's the character I would use. The boogeyman. The, exactly the way they, they use them in the cartoon. Bring them to life. Freaks you out. To take it to that whole different ghost dimension that he that he used to go through people's closets and stuff. And to, to, to kidnap little kids. You, you got the kid element in there. There he is again. There's the kid element in there again. And it makes it a whole different type of movie. So... Sony, if you're listening, if you want to, you want some good advice, let me, let me tell you something. Make this a tie in with the cartoon. Stop comparing it to the original. And you might, you know, let's come on, get it together, guys. Anyway, those are our questions. I want to thank the contributors. That is at Miss Moves. If you're like I said, if you're not a subscriber, what the hell, man? Hit that subscribe button. Go over there. Check it out. They got this, uh, their uh, weekly episodes of Pillow Fights. And it's get your mind out of the gutter. Go check it out. I also want to thank Sasha Pearl Raver. I uh, just, you know, just kidding. You know, I respect, you know, her situation. You know, I'm not going to, I'm just joking, guys. I, I do love her on, on Collider uh, TV talk. If you're not watching Collider, what the hell, guys? You already know. You should be watching Collider. You should also be subscribing here as well. So thank you guys. Thank you for the questions. It was awesome. I can't believe that uh, my presence was acknowledged. My day was made. My week was made. My month was made. My whole universe was great. Check out that collaboration that uh, Sasha Pro Raver uh, did on Hit or Miss Movie. And, and check her out on 
on Collider uh, TV Talk. And always, guys, you can always win prizes. You, every 100 subscribers, we give away free movie tickets. We also give away uh, merchandise. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. Subscribe, share, like, comment, contest, winning DuckTales. Come on. As always, let's keep talking.